everyone, and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Monday. Yeah, Monday. Yeah, the 22nd. Uh, 22nd of May. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Uh, for those on the video view, for first off, just as a note, we go live Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So Specific Daylight Time. The video is going to go black for just a moment because I need to adjust this before I forget because that intro music was, oh, oh, it was way too loud. My camera's all kinds of fucked up. That's okay. Man, that's what I get for taking my computer downstairs for the weekend. Uh, sorry, this content is not available right now. Are you, can you see the stream? No. No? Hmm. Now I can. Now, now you can? Oh. I still don't see anything. Wonderful. That's a good way to start things. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yep, yeah, mine still just says that it's not available right now. My sock keeps falling down. I had to deal with it the entire day. I'm sorry. It's just not. I hate it. Sock just getting blown out or something. It it's completely dead. I should probably throw it away. I need to get new pairs of socks. Also, my chair broke, and now I'm a little bit lower to the floor. Oh no wonder I can't see it. Heard a dir logged into Jennifer's Facebook. Ha 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 ha. Congrats. That would probably help. Just maybe, maybe a bit. A little bit. <laughs> I still can't look at it. Son of a bee. <laughs> sucks to suck. Oh, so Nathan, how are you today, sir? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, yeah, it was a pretty good weekend. I had a lot of fun. Um, played a little bit of D&D on Friday instead of Saturday. Saturday was my mom's birthday, and, and I couldn't make it out there. So uh, instead, this upcoming Friday, after I get off work, I'm going to head over there and just spend the day. We're gonna. Um, I'm going to make her um, a cake and everything. So, Nathan, are you able to see the stream? Yeah. I can't. Hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Can you send me the link to it? I, I, can, I can try. Yeah. I mean, because I definitely All can't. right, I'm going to be looking at my phone, guys. Just don't worry. Oh, are you going to drop it in Hangouts? Yeah, so that it doesn't mess up your stream. Oh, whatever. Oh, hey, hang on. Interesting. Hmm. Skype. Oh. What a, I'll, I'll pretend like that makes sense. Oh god, shut up, phone. Be quiet, silence all the things. Oh. Anyway, um, if you want to support this uh, sad mess of a start that we have going on right now, please go to Patreon. Isn't that like every either day or Monday? I, I don't know, maybe. I mean, I restarted my computer last, like, I sh actually like let it shut down and stuff so last you night. Guys what you guys need to do is donate to our Patreon so we can hire someone who will do this for us. Oh, God. That I'm not sure if that's a good idea or a terrible we'll, idea. We'll oh. have to... You guys are just going to have to donate enough for us to get our own studio. We'll get literally a studio apartment, but it'll be our, our actual studio. Well, I mean, most content producers that are serious about it, like, they, they get an office so that they... Discon they, they establish that that's a place to do work and they have that disconnect. Yeah. A, not very many Twitch streamers do that. In fact, a lot of Twitch streamers will claim that their living room is their office so that they can get tax benefits for paying rent. Do you know how hard that is to actually achieve? Uh, it's it's pretty difficult, but Firebat does it, but he pulls in fuckloads of money because well, no, he streams. No, 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 I'm not saying the difficulty in the matter of accomplishing that. I'm saying the difficulty that is involved with trying to to actually legally claim a office at your house it's probably completely difficult like i i have no idea i've never tried it so uh, as a very quick like layman's term rundown of it if you have an in-home office that you intend to claim on your taxes it can only be used for that purpose and what I mean by that is that if, like, so, like, you know how we, for a while there, had the computer room and the spare bedroom? Mm -hmm. If I would have set that up to be, like, my office or whatever, or, like, my streaming room or whatever, however you wanted to, you want to designate it, no one else is allowed to use it. Like, Jennifer's <laughs> computer couldn't be in there and she couldn't use it unless I had a business license and she was one of my employees and her work in there was part of the job, essentially. But otherwise, you're not allowed to legally claim it. Now, whether they're going to investigate it or not, probably uh, not a large chance. Um, whatever. But it is still something to uh, be aware of. 
or you can just fucking get an office. Yeah, that works too. Fuck, even a studio, just a studio apartment. Do we have many studio apartments up here in Surprising Anchor? surprisingly, yes. They're in a lot of shittier buildings, a lot of Widener buildings. Oh god, Widener Properties is terrible. Yeah, you get a I get a lot of fucking FEDs from there throughout the day. What does FED stand for? Forcible entry and detainer. Oh, okay. It's just an eviction case. Got it. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Fun times though. Fun times indeed. Definitely. Um anyway, you ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into topic number 10 then. Ten. Supreme Court strikes down North Carolina maps for Congress. This was submitted by your fave Mel. Yep. All right, we're going to start this one off early, guys. All right, let's go. Ah, oh, I didn't mess it up first this time. Sick. Yep. Actually, I mean, kind of. You were messing up your stream, so, like, whatever. It ended up loading without any problem. I didn't even need the link. But you did black out for a little bit. That's fine. So, anyways, uh, this is what? Take. Take two, because we just fudged the first one. Action. <laughs> this was submitted by your fave yellow man to our politics. It's kind of, hmm. So, yeah, gerrymandering. We've talked about it in the past. It's how the Congress will redraw district lines to give their party an advantage in the next election. In this case... Like bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it, it is very much so. The only people it benefits are those in office that want to stay in office, and that's the extent of it of how it goes. There is no other benefit involved besides that they got the ability to redraw them, so they do. In this case, they were trying to redraw the lines in North Carolina because, for those exact same reasons, they wanted to redraw them to give themselves a stronger advantage towards the Republican Party. But during an investigation, because people went, whoa, do you see how they're drawing these lines? We say no, because... It's racially charged the way they're drawing the lines. And they went and investigated it because this was taken to court. And they literally just drew lines around black neighborhoods. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. That's pretty racist. It's pretty illegal. Yeah, which is why their their submission has been completely denied. The, The damn liberals are bad, right? Oh, yeah. We're the worst. They're the ones rigging the elections. That's how Obama got into office. Oh, bummer. Really? Yeah, that's what all my family calls him. That is the first time in 10 years I have heard that. Yeah. They called him Obama. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm, I we can... had to put up with eight years of his shit. Yeah, but... Just sit down and shut up. Let these eight years go by. Well, I mean, if the first four years were that bad, he probably wouldn't have gotten reelected. Holy shit. There were so many memes for for Trump today on BBC. Because they were reporting about the crazy shit that people were posting about him, and I was fucking crying. That's amazing. Yeah, it was... Oh, God. It was the best way to get memes in a place where I couldn't normally get memes. He's so... he, He just keeps on getting, like, dragged... He's dragging himself farther into the mud. Yep. Like, yep. here's the thing, like, Trump is by no means the first president that has done the things he is doing. Like, there have been presidents in the past that were, like, horrible PR disasters that didn't understand when to, like, they would say the wrong stuff at the wrong time and get themselves in trouble. The difference is now we have the internet, so it's more widespread and more, you know, people are more aware of it. But mm-hmm. with those presidents, they were told to sit down, shut up and smile and they would and they would get through their four years and they would leave but trump gives us gold memes says kendall but instead trump is told to sit down shut up and instead of doing any of that he's like he goes to twitter i was like you know what's a good idea twitter i'm gonna just go to my golden toilet at 4 a.m and just Twitter it. That's what's up. I've decided um, this last weekend, um, just a side note, uh, next week um, you're going to see me in a different spot. Yeah? I'm going to clean my room and move my computer. There's something else I wanted to talk to you about about next week and possibly forever in the future. Um, why not? Now's the best time, you know? I don't, I don't like commitment. Well, I mean, you've already committed to this, but my question is, how would you feel about moving the show from streaming at 9 p.m. our time to 6 p.m.? Uh, I would have to immediately do it as soon as I get off. It'd give me time to cook. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. 
Uh, and that was the idea on my end too is like immediately get home set up do the show be done with the show by like seven and then have the rest of the night instead of being like start your night and then okay i'm gonna go do podcast stuff and then try to go back to do more night stuff makes more sense let's just hope i don't miss my bus yeah we can try it out next week i mean see how it goes but it was something that i was gonna run by you and i'm just gonna run by you right now live on the show it also give more people a chance to possibly listen especially in the rest of the country because 6 p.m for us would be 10 p.m on the east coast so it'd be a, a wider time block on top of that if i move my computer you won't see that god-awful window in the background that's a good plan uh josh and kindle both in the chat room said yes do the show at six fuck it we'll do it live um so, in which case, we'll, we'll probably start trying to do that next week. Um, just got some things going on this week that won't make that transition easy. So, next Monday, you want to try and do it at 6? Sure. Awesome. Everybody you'll who... Have to, you'll have to remind me. I, I will remind you, sir. Um, everybody who is listening not on the live feed, we do go live on Facebook, on our Facebook group page. Um, you can just search I read it, pull it up. We go live Monday through Thursday, currently at 9 p.m. Alaska Daylight Time, which is 10 p.m. for Pacific, 11, 12, such on, so on and so forth. Um, we are going to try 6 p.m. next week. So if you're listening to uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, in which case it'll still be at 9 p.m. And if that's too late for you, totally understand. But we're going to try it at an earlier time next week. And yeah. if, if it works out well, we'll just keep rolling it that way. Definitely, definitely. Because I, then. It, it came up because I was, what, what, what movie was I wanting to watch? I wanted to watch a movie and I was like, dang, with like dinner and like family stuff, there is no possible way for me to watch that before the show and I get done with the show at 10 and I'm not staying up till midnight to watch a movie. That's where you we, and me differ. You, you'd be like, I'll stay up till three. Oh, I was wanting to rewatch Howl's Moving Castle. That's what it was. Uh, I'm going to be watching American Gods tonight. That's a good plan. Anyway. Nine. Spider-Man Spider Homecomings, Tom Holland is Nathan Drake in an upcoming Uncharted movie. This was submitted by Night 5 to our movies. He also dances like a motherfucker. So, first off, for the non-gaming people that listen to the show, Uncharted is a very popular series of video games for the PlayStation systems. And it is basically if... Tomb Raider was a guy. Yeah. And that... and and With a very, very amazing first name. <laughs> well, if Tomb Raider was a guy and was and cracked more jokes and was a little bit more free spirited, because Laura Croft is always like super serious. It's like it's like if you took um, um, Captain Mal from Serenity and Tomb Raider and you jammed them together. Yeah, that's about right. So. They have been trying to get a movie put together for this because, I mean, in theory, it could work. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like a modern-day Indiana Jones is a good way to look at it as well. Sure, yeah. Um, and they're like, Let, we want to do movies of these. The, you know, the video game sphere loves them. Let's, uh, you know, let's let, let's get it into the, the fucking cinema world. And they were, not, games. Ha they were not having a good go about doing that. And I guess there's, Sony's going to give it another go in which they have now cast Tom Holland to be Nathan Drake. That's amazing. It, is it, though? I, I, I think it's going to be fun. I just, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Tom Holland right now. He just came out of nowhere with the fucking with the Spider Man, and his Spider Man was perfect. And then he danced perfectly to to what's its bitch um, umbrella. Well, see, here's the thing: is that like I I haven't seen enough of Tom Holland, but he's he he's still got such a a baby face to me. Well, I mean, Nathan Drake kind of has a baby face. He's just got a bunch of fucking dirt and everything smeared all over him. That's fair. Throw some. And on top of that, you ha he has to be one hundred percent clean shaven for Spider Man. That's okay. That's fair. So I mean, give him a little bit of facial hair, throw some dirt on him, and get right. Him even if it's fake facial hair, can he grow facial hair? Do we know? I I don't know. He looks he looks like he can, but I don't want to be that judgmental. Because you used that, to not. That be able being to. said, that being said, if you need facial hair, Tom Holland, I got you, fam. You'll shave your face to give it to him. Hell yeah, I would in an instant. <laughs> He'd be like, hey. Shave your beard for me, and I'd be like, oh, it's already off. 
<laughs> Here you go. Just just pulls it off of your face. <laughs> Like like a friggin' uh like a Lego block. I was gonna say Mr. Potato Head yeah, accessory. That works too. I am a potato, so I mean a couch potato? Nah, just a potato. You are what you eat, right? Do you eat a lot of potatoes? I do. Oh, okay. I mean what is it you can technically survive on nothing but potatoes and milk? Po potatoes and milk. But <laughs> I have a problem there. You're potatoes, lactose. milk, and like a little bit of vitamins, but like for the most part it's just potatoes and milk. Right on. Except for the whole lactose intolerant thing. See, I would have to alter that because not only not only should I not be drinking milk, but I should also be supplementing a bunch of iron into my body because I, I my family has a high risk of anemia. Mm. So, under relatively normal circumstances, potatoes and milk. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Unless your body is weak. <laughs> Ancestry.com takes DNA ownership rights from customers and their relatives. This is submitted by M Serial to our technology. What's wrong, Nathan? I feel really bad for my grandma right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it, 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 this is this is a little bit of alarmism on the surface because. While it's somewhat true, it is also somewhat false. So, as part of the terms and conditions, they get that they are going. You agree to let them hold the information that is your DNA indefinitely. Now, at any time, they claim that you can, you know, cancel your account or, you know, say that you would like to have your information withdrawn, and they claim that they will remove it and delete it. Inf inform information. Information. I, I heard information. Oh, information. In information. No, but that would be kind of cool. Cool. Okay. Like a super inform informative version of me. Um, the other things the exact that, opposite. The other things that are in there is like a warning that says that your DNA information might be used against you, and as well like as like in the court of law or just in general. Uh, no. Are in, they going to make clones of me? In like a court of law. Down? And the reason being is that you 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 match DNA to other relatives. So I mean. What it might mean is that they can use the DNA information on Ancestry.com to match it to someone in your family to use in a trial if necessary. Okay. As well as a waiver of legal rights, which basic, which mostly just means that over DNA information, you are not allowed to sue Ancestry.com, and they will not sue you either. I mean, that's good. But Ancestry.com, in response to this article, already came out and said they amended that because a lot of the quotes in this, they said that those are from old terms of, right, uh, terms of agreement in which we have amended them. Those are back from 2014. It is now 2017. We've amended them. We've also never sold people's information to third-party marketers in which a lot of people held up their finger and went, third-party marketers. That's a very specifically chosen word. Are we going to have to have uh, net tr neutrality for DNA? Well, and that's the thing, though, is, like, because this person... That, Deoxyribonucleic neutrality? What What can you... And, and this is, for me, a, a moment, uh, a, more of a position of ignorance, is I don't know what true power slash value there is in a database of DNA information. Because, like, th with the information that you hear about, like, oh, such and such got leaked and hacked and all this kind of stuff, or, like, when Facebook or Google monitors your internet activity, that is, the, the main reason that that is valuable is because it is valuable to marketers, to advertisement agencies, because they see, oh, he's been looking at cameras, let's advertise cameras to him. So, all right, so Kendall says they could clone you, Michael. And at first, that sounds kind of dumb and like a joke, but, like, legitimately think about it for a second. If they have the rights to your DNA, at some point, if the technology is designed well enough, they could take your DNA and clone you. <sighs> okay. Because, like, right now, Ancestry.com has a database of 3 million people, roughly. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, and then... And I, I'm not saying Ancestry.com should be the ones to do this. At a certain, like, I, I feel like if we do ever foresee such technology being possible of where not necessarily we need a clone, we just need the DNA blueprint to make someone. 
in some ways, wouldn't it be good for us to have a database of everyone? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't really know. Because some people, some people should just not be cloned or be around, you know. Right, but I, I, and this goes into the scientific of maybe we could learn something. Like, for instance, you know, if we had like Stalin's DNA, we could if we got to the point where we could realistically clone someone and read their DNA that in depth, then we would have a lot of information on them. So maybe we could learn things about the idea between like nature versus nurture and see how much of it is on a DNA level. I'm just worried. They could build an army of, of Stalin's. No, just of people. Of you? Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree with Kendall. I think they should clone body parts, but not actual whole humans. Um, that way we can have, like, organ farms, and we don't have to have organ donors anymore. Sure. Um, on top of that, I would also, and you know, I'm just saying, I would also really like to see our DNA spliced with animals, but, you know, that's beyond the point. Whatever. I, I really enjoyed the Isle of Dr. Moreau. Well, I mean, in theory, they wouldn't even maybe need to splice it with animals. I mean, we were already getting to the point where they can do gene... No, 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 no. We, we do. Where they can do gene editing and actually edit your DNA. If they can edit your DNA in such a way that it can continuously be programmed to rejuvenate itself and not if it, not, not like wear out and die out, then you wouldn't need to splice it with animals. No, we're splicing it with animals. Animorphs? Is that what you want? Is that your... No, not quite. I, like I said, I, I drew inspiration from the Isle of Dr. Moreau. That being said, though, I would my, my first instinct as a kid after reading that and watching the movie with Val Kilmer was, holy shit, if we spliced a human with a Galapagos turtle, they could live forever. Why? Because Galapagos turtles live to like 200. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it would be that it would do the same to our lifespan. I, I mean, we could theoretically pinpoint the DNA from it so that we can add it to ours. That being said, maybe we won't get 200. Maybe we'll just get 153 or so. That's still more than we have. And yes, I would. Kendall like to be part octopus so that I can have a tentacle beard. So now, I mean, I already have no spine, so like... So now my question then is, Nathan, if we get down to the point where we can see and recognize the specific DNA sections of a Galapagos turtle that makes them live longer, and we already know how to edit DNA, why don't we just edit our DNA to live longer? Because fuck it, why not? Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't because want... we'll have people that are also animals. I... It's like fucking with evolution. It's amazing. <sighs> don't play God, Nathan. Of course, I, I guess I guess my I, idea isn't any different. I don't have to play God. I am God. Seven. Eight hundred billion dollars in Medicaid cuts. I'm not God, guys. Please don't <laughs> pray to me for this. This is submitted by World of Clones. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> To our politics. <laughs> no. no. No way. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Oh, fuck. Current president of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump, has released his budget for the upcoming fiscal year for the United States of America. This is also under the presumption that the GOP health care bill that has been instituted to replace the Affordable Care Act will go through and be passed. If that doesn't happen, then his budget doesn't exactly work so well. But as part of that bill is going to be rolling back and removing a large amount of the Medicaid expansion that has been put in place by the Obama administration. I don't like this. Um, yeah. I mean, I might, I may not use it because I have my own state stuff going on, but I would love, all right, I'm one of those people, all right, I'm definitely one of those people that like paying taxes because I like seeing my money go to some fucking use for everybody. Well, and that's the thing is right now it would drastically reduce Medicaid funding and Medicaid, the Medicaid program currently covers over 70 million low income children, adults, disabled Americans and elderly. I, I know several families that could possibly die 20, if they get sick. 25% of America is covered by Medicaid. It just makes me think. 
back to when I used to work at at um at the Boys and Girls Club, how many of those kids would just be completely fucked? Well, I mean, without Medicaid and without federal assistance, a lot of parents wouldn't able to be fo- be able to afford things like the Boys and Girls Club, or be able to afford a child. I, I yeah, that's or six like some of them have, but like whatever. That's at a different conversation. Um, yeah, but I mean, or you know, be able to afford a six. 600- I feel like I feel like after like four children, the state should be like, or the government should be like, hey, if you want. We can give you a, f- a free, like, tube tying if you want. If you don't, that's fine. But, like, you've already had four kids. If you want, we can do this. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, I mean, what are you doing? Same I, with men. I know somebody that has, how many kids do they have? Seven? Twelve? Oh, and, 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 like, they're, they're one of the people that I look at them and I'm like, man, I know you had, like, nine kids but Jesus is the system paying you a lot of money because you have nine kids. It's fucking ridiculous. Although, oh, you 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 gotta you gotta make sure you have that kid. You can't you know just abort it. But you know what? As soon as it's alive, fuck it. We don't need it anymore. It's just about trying to appease people on different fronts. It's it's it. You know, I, I'm. It's gen- so vastly polarizing. Yet they're in the same like mindset constantly. It, I don't understand. It's about retaining their seat. It's not actually about what's right or wrong or what they believe or don't believe in. Very few of the members of Congress, not just, not just politicians, but like people in general, have that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair. I mean, I just I don't understand. Oh God, just stupidity disgusts me. Well, I mean, I think it's because they don't. I disgust myself. They don't see the connection of the situations. It... Oh God, everyone needs to think for an extra like five minutes about things. And no, this is this is the age of the internet where you can just yell and people will eventually listen to you if you just keep yelling. Shut the fuck up, Michael. You're giving away our secrets. Oh, is that our secret? I mean, what's what we're doing? Shut the fuck up. Oh. <laughs> la, la, la. Sorry, I'm trying to be quiet. Uh, where am I? I need to hit this button. Six. Family slammed for reckless behavior after sea lion drags girl into water in Richmond, B.C. I'm sorry. Number five starts similar to that. And I was like, that does not say family. Anyways. This was submitted by reporter at large to our news. So if you didn't see the reports or anything like that, this family was at a, you know, they were hanging out on a dock. There's like restaurants and stuff there. And there's signs all over the place that say, don't feed the sea lions. Don't interact with the sea lions. And there was a fucking sea lion in the water. And this little family was feeding it. No, they weren't actually feeding it. They were pretending to feed it in which it was coming up to get food from them because it had been. Because they're being dicks. Well, and it was it, it was getting confused and annoyed because it did, there there was no food that they were giving it, and then this little girl sat down on the edge of the friggin' pier to take a picture with it because it was hanging out in the water and it selfie. Well, and it saw her white dress f- flowing about in the wind, and it's like, oh, is that food? And grabs it and pulls her down into the water. Do you want to know something interesting about selfies? What's that? More people die per year. From trying to take a selfie, then people die from overdosing on marijuana. Nathan, considering the number of people that have overdosed on marijuana ever is still zero. Okay, how about this? More people die per year from that, you know, from trying to take selfies than people overdosing on acid. Sure, I'll accept that. Oh, is it still zero? You don't over, you don't overdose from acid. Usually, what happens when you die from an, something acid happens? It's usually because you scare yourself into having a heart arrhythmia. Oh, okay. Do you got an actual statistic to compare it to? Do you know how many people on average a year? I die? want to say more people die on average taking a selfie than coconuts falling on their heads. Okay, I, I, but that's that's still a fairly large thing. It happens often. Not often. Fair amount for a year. Isn't it like 500 people? So, I, I don't know if it's that big, but it's a it's a decent number. Well, dude, there, it's like, what, 100 people die a year from vending machines falling on them? Yeah, I want to know how many people die a year for selfies. Well, look, I assumed you had a number. I, I had one earlier when I was on Facebook, and I don't remember it. Either way, so... 
initially the response was, oh my god, this girl got attacked by a wild animal. And then the people who owned the pier, the harbor, as well as, like, wildlife officials were like, no, don't... They were, they were provoking this animal by pretending to feed it and then got close to a 600-pound wild mammal. Okay, 49 people have died from selfies since 2014. Okay. And they have their ages, and it's a 75% a, of the victims are male. So um, it's like what, like 17 a year? Yeah, and the average age is 21. Okay. Holy shit. It's insane. Deaths... Per uh, number of deaths by age 14 2, 15 2, 16 1, 17 2, 18 3, 19 4, 25, 21, 12, 22, 3. It's because they got drunk and they're trying to take drunk selfies. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. No, no other thought has crossed my mind, but holy God. It's fucking insane. Well, fortunately, this little girl is okay and. Everybody, just as like a public service announcement. Don't if, feed animals like that. No, it, 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 more than that. If you see a wild animal, remember it is a wild animal. Leave okay. it alone. More people die by selfies per year than vending machines, than shark attacks, than American football, than Mount Everest, and then it ties with skateboarding. Okay. Damn, 625 people for, per year for erotic asphyxiation? We gotta jack up those numbers. You just want someone to as as asphyxiate you in an erotic fashion. That's not true. That's how David Carradine went out, and I, I can't do that, man. That man was awesome. Five. Turkey slams the United States over aggressive acts against bodyguards. This was submitted by Skank Hunt 92 <laughs> To our world news. That's a fucking South Park reference. That's amazing. So, you know the best way to uh, get out of something? Mm, say that it was the other person's fault? Yep. Point fingers and say, no, uh they did it. And that's what Turkey's doing. What the fuck is that's in there? That's what Turkey is trying to do. So, apparently, Turkey is trying to claim that there was aggression against their bodyguards first, and then the bodyguards were given the order to disperse the crowd. Uh, that's stupid. That's oh god. Uh, they're just they're just they're just jive turkeys. They're also saying that they were um, unfairly treated and aggressively handled since, as part of the scuffle, several of the bodyguards were attacked back when they started beating the shit out of people. It's self defense. Well, here's the other thing. Actually, is that the people that attacked the bodyguards were not the protesters. It was the police attacking the bodyguards who were kicking people on the ground. Oh my god. This is how you start a war, Turkey. We about to oven roast you. God damn it, Nathan. It's a pun! Are they by the water? We can send in the subs. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, they're part of the Mediterranean. Like a turkey sub? Oh. It's a pun! Do you have another one? I don't know, they're- I just- I worry because they have borders. They're sandwiched between a couple states. They're not states, countries. Oh, that was weird. Oh, there it goes. It's a pun! Um. Oh, God. I gotta think of some more. Keep going. Dude, you're gonna need to step it up. I mean, you've barely even roasted them. It's a pun! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna take you out back, back and brown bag you. What? Have you ever had a brown bag turkey? No. You put a, 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 a paper bag over it after glazing it and a bunch of shit, and you let it roast in the brown bag so that it all just it doesn't escape into the oven. It just sits in the bag and, and absorbs all of it. Oh, huh, okay. My mom makes the best fucking turkey. Oh, my God. It, it like, you don't have to tear it apart or cut it. It just kind of just Melts flops. In your mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so November is my favorite month. Not not just because it's my birthday, but because Thanksgiving is around, and my mom makes the best fucking turkeys. She yeah. makes the best turkey. She makes some pretty damn good green bean salad, or not green bean salad, green bean casserole. Um, my grandma makes some pretty boss candied yams. My great grandma Ugh. makes makes divinity fudge. I really dislike yams. You're 
It, oh, it's one God. Of the, How can you dislike anything with potato in the name? I really like potatoes, but sweet potatoes really dislike them. I don't understand you. It's one of the only foods I dislike is sweet potatoes. I fucking love sweet potatoes, especially with marshmallow on top. Oh, my God. Well, you yes. know what? They are all yours. Uh, sure. Oh. I'll, I'll eat all of it. Manchester Arena explosions. Two loud bangs heard at men or at men arena. This was submitted by Scottish Stevio to Our World News. So, or Stevo, I'm sorry. I still don't care for this uh, this title. Anyway, Ariana Grande was performing at the Manchester Arena, um, and after the concert had concluded when people were starting to clear out there were two large bangs heard at the lobby those large bangs were explosions there are now 19 people pronounced dead and over 50 injured those numbers are still being collected this happened only a matter of like four hours ago about five hours ago at this point if you are listening to it live um yeah we don't know the source yet they're currently believing that it is going to be a terrorist attack or going to be labeled as one because you don't normally blow up a friggin arena especially with people in it yeah especially with people in it um a part of me just hopes that this was some kind of accident um well because we don't need anything else that's aggravated at the same time i know it's not an accident yeah i mean if, like, a pipe burst or something, like, you know, maybe one person might have gotten hurt, but no, the lobby blew up. It's, it's really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know what to say here. Like, this blows. Yeah. I, I didn't, and I did not mean that. <laughs> so, right now, we don't, no one's tried to, like, it, it's happened so recently, no one's tried to take you know credit for it or anything like that they're not yet, they're, not yet. They, they're i feel like i feel like isis half half the time they just see something and they're like oh yeah no we totally did that right it's like well that'd be a convenient thing to claim as ours and you know maybe it is them maybe it's not it doesn't matter the important thing here is that 19 t 19 families have lost a member and 50 of them are hoping that they survive and that sucks and we, 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 we bring these to you because it is important that you are aware of what is happening in other places so you don't just live in your happy circle. But there's not a lot to say past it besides these situations are horrible and suck and I wish that they didn't happen. But I recognize that the world is not the, the beautiful, fun place I wish it was all the time. And right yeah. now we have deep, deep traumatic rifts throughout the entire planet. So if you do have anyone in or near Manchester, or if you knew someone that went to that area on a Grande concert, maybe check in with them. Make sure they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already. If this is the first of you hearing about it, I'm, I'm sorry that we have to deliver this news to you. At the same time, though, at least they did hear about it. Mm -hmm. It's true. Because, I mean, less and less people are watching the news, so you have to get your news from somewhere, and I I, I try to make sure that we are somewhat credible as a source. Mm -hmm. um, there's no other information on it at the time. I mean, since this propped, uh, popped up today, if we do get any more information going on throughout the rest of the week, if, if it's something that is, you know, relevant, we will bring it to you. Yeah. That's Three. Nicki Minaj quietly kept sending funds to an Indian village. Today, this is... it's fully developed. Oh, I'm sorry. It's this is right. submitted by Pa1 to our uplifting news. This reminds me of Akon. Yeah, a bit. Now, for the... Yeah, I think it was Akon. For the safety of the village, um, Nicki Minaj and the press have not released the name of the village. Because they don't want... Kind of smart. Yeah, they don't want people going They don't going want the there. press showing up everywhere. Exactly. Now, like, Nicki does have a couple of pictures of, like, the, the people and stuff that are there. But apparently Nicki Minaj this whole time has just been, like, funding this town. And has helped them get a computer center, a tailoring institute, reading program, water wells. Just completely developing the entire town so that it can be a town. I want to do that. I just don't have the money for that. It's cool, though, like, it's the thing, like, incidentally, I looked at the, uh, just because I could, I, while I was at work today, I was like, how many billionaires are there in the world? It was like, what, a hundred? Two thousand. That's not, that's, that's a fair amount. Now, I mean, like, 
600 of those are people that we have $1 billion to our name or 1.1. 1. 1. I mean, if you're looking for people that have, you know, like 20 billion, there's like only a hundred of them. But, right. and it is good though to see the people that have all this money to do something with it. Something positive. Yeah. Although now I'm curious, what is Nicki Minaj's net worth? That's a good, that's a good question. How much is that ass worth? 75 million. Nice. That's a pretty, that's a huge amount. Yep. But I mean, she is doing a lot with 75 million compared to what we know billionaires are doing nothing with. Oh yeah. No, she's doing, she's doing great work. I, I feel like more people should be doing this. And it's really unfortunate that you see realistically a lot of just artists doing it. I feel like it's because, and I hate to use the starving artist trope, but starving artists know what it feels like to not have, have anything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sucks. Yeah, no, it does suck to not have anything. I've been there. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the feeling. But yeah, thank you, Nicki Minaj, and I, I, I definitely will say that I enjoy your music, and I hope you continue to do good things. I enjoy a couple of your songs, yeah. I enjoy most of them. Um, Jennifer recently found one that hasn't been like widespread or anything that is definitely absolutely beautiful. It's called Grand Piano. Hmm. I would strongly advise listening to it later. I really like her songs mixed with other songs. That's fair. It's just I'll, fire. Some of her songs, though, real bad. Anaconda, not good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be hasty. That's one of the best songs to mix shit with. Sure. But the song itself on its own, not good. I would watch that music video and listen to that song over and over again. You would watch that music video without the music on over and over again. That's not entirely not true. Mm -hmm. Two. Hunter dies after shot elephant falls on him. This was submitted by Boondu Basher to our Not The Onion. So okay, so... I read this one. I want to talk about this one. Okay, go for it. So this guy, he lives in South Africa, and he's been he's he's essentially a, a hunting guide. People will hire him so that they can go on a safari to hunt specific animals. Uh, he'll hunt lions. He'll hunt elephants. He'll hunt uh, you know the savanna animals that aren't endangered. Um, which I think actually some of them are now endangered, and it's just lax over there because that they they're, they're uh, they were hunting. <coughs> over by where Cecil the lion had died. Mm -hmm. um, so he, they spot an elephant and they shoot at it and it's not, it, it was angry. So it rushes them and picks him up with the trunk. And as soon as that happens, boom, the thing gets shot in the head and falls right on top of him. Right. And he fucking just dies. Well, I mean, Elef he's also the friend. He's, a, he was a very good friend of the guy who was found recently in Africa who was a hunter who had been found inside of an alligator. Oh, joy. Yeah, so it's not an uncommon thing for hunters to just outright fucking die. Because, like, there's a lot of really big game over there. Mm -hmm. Hunting an elephant is fucking terrifying. I personally never would hunt an elephant because those motherfuckers are smart. And I feel like any animal that's that's super intelligent should should just not be touched. Dolphins, octopi fucking um elephants just they're super fucking smart yeah and aggressive yeah and i feel like because you're doing this you're gonna start a, like like there are elephants who will raid villages and try and smash them like you're trying to start wars with elephants let's not do that and also they will win well we have elephant guns. It depends on the village you're talking about. That's fair. If you're if you're fighting a village, like some random village in Africa, sure, the elephants will probably stomp that shit to the ground. If you're trying to step to a major city in South Africa, the elephants are probably dead. That's fair. Unless you just get enough of them. <laughs> oh my god, can you... Oh man, what, what was the name of that TV show? I think it was called Zoo. There was this TV show where all of the animals in the world had decided that humans are fucking stupid, so they just went around and started slaughtering all of them. Okay. I'm, I think it only got like a season or two, but... My brain was also thinking of, uh, it's like Dr. Doodle 2 or 3 when he uses a bunch of animals to assault like the dentist's Furry, house. furry vengeance, yep. 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 I think it was 3. One. Donald Trump drops out of Saudi Arabia event due to exhaustion. 
This was submitted by well, 14 hours ago by Bit of Fresh Air to our world news. Oh, God damn it. I had almost gotten all of them. Oh, well. Yeah. So, people have had a heyday with this. That, all right, so this whole Saudi Arabia thing in general has been one giant, giant talked about. Just, just I don't know what to call it. Scenario, fiasco, I don't know. It's just widely talked about because a lot of shit happened when he went to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. For instance, they touched the magic glowing orb and, and I mean, Sauron or something. And I, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who was a very strong Trump supporter, and they were applauding Saudi Arabia for Saudi Arabia rolling out the red carpet and doing all of this big show for Donald Trump arriving. And, like, my first reaction was, like, you do realize that how badly they treat women there, right? And the, this friend was a woman, and I was, and they're like, they're like, that that's their own problems. They're about to sign a hundred and eighty billion dollar deal that'll help America so much. And I'm like, so as long as it help, as long as it benefits you, it's okay. That's, isn't that, the point of slavery? Well, and also my brain went, it, it, like, you know, if it, it, they're profiting off of this behavior if you are accepting the money of those profits then you're basically just condoning it it's like blood diamonds yeah actually it's a lot like blood diamonds but that conversation fell off because i don't know anyway but so what what just the tomato tomato i guess i don't know I, I i mean here's the thing there was a woman in 2007 who was gang raped in and Saudi Arabia. she was arrested. And she was arrested because she had sex out of wedlock. I don't feel sex and rape are the same thing. They don't see a difference. I, that's so fucking stupid. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about that Donald Trump went there and he was doing all this talk and stuff. And like, if you, we're not going to talk about him going off of script on his speech and talking about the the, the no, that, that's not what this is about. This is about first off, Trump doing what Trump does and just keeps on like, I don't know. I'm not even sure the right words for this because one of the like people are pulling like people have all of his tweets on backlog, right? And people were talking and one of his old tweets was about how Hillary Clinton doesn't have the stamina to be president and then fast forward to him being president, he's like, I'm too tired. Um I feel like we should have really thought about who we were electing as president when we elected the guy whose favorite food is steak and ketchup. Well, here's the other interesting thing, and like more people are wanting to pork. pork. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael, it's beef. It's a pork. No, no one wants to pork Trump. Nope, not even his wife. Not anymore. <laughs> like every time I see them together, she just has this like icy death face. And like, did you see the gif of where he went to like grab her hand and she slapped it away from her? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Or the, the bit where he's standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and she has to remind him to raise his hand to his heart. Mm -hmm. Either way, so people are like, oh, he said that, you know, Hillary Clinton wouldn't be strong enough. And, like, he's, you know, dropping out, blah, 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 blah. And, like, you see, the thing is, like, I believe that going over there was exhausting. No, I can 100% I can believe that. 100%. Like, I, I, especially because, especially like... I was going to say, especially because he's, like, he's not used to it. That... Sure, he's used to flying around a lot, and he might fly to other countries. But he will fly immediately back to his his uh, his uh, residence to sleep in his own bed. That, and he's 70 years old. Like, yeah. Let's not forget that Trump is 70. Like, so, I full well believe that he was exhausted. He also flew from America to Saudi Arabia. He flew all the way around the world. And then he went to Israel. Like I and had talks with the, uh, with Netanyahu and and other people. Like I full well believe that he was exhausted, one hundred percent, without a doubt, he was exhausted. And that being said, here here's the yes, he is hypocritical in that. Well, and and that's not even the thing. He, the the point that this article from Independent.co is wanting to make and it is, it's okay to be exhausted. It's okay for as a president you go, I can't do this right this moment. Because I simply, I, I want to give, 
Because you're a person. Yeah, I want to give you the attention you deserve as another world leader, and I cannot do that right now. Mm -hmm. So what does he do instead? He sends his daughter to the meeting. Wait. In Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Wait. 35-year-old Ivanka Trump takes the place of her father at that meeting. Honestly, I'd rather have her than Eric, though. Oh, yeah, that's for damn sure. Or or even Donald Jr. Fuck Donald Jr., dude. That guy's a prick. The I feel like Donald Jr. is worse than Donald. Yeah. Yeah, no, you might be pretty close. Like, he's a pretty bad dude. The thing here is that this is now raising the question of is that he is stepping back as president to let his daughter represent him in his stead. What is this, a patriarchy? Like, or, like... I don't, I don't know. We're democratic. If you're gonna step down and let somebody else do it, you should probably do, you know, choose your vice president. Right? I, is he there? Do we know if he's I, there? I don't, I don't know. Or just keep going down the line. Don't just immediately choose your daughter because that. Well, and uh, I mean, honestly, if I if you wanted me to choose between having someone speak between Donald or Ivanka, I'm choosing Ivanka because Ivanka, oh, 100%. like she doesn't say things she's not supposed to. She's very professional, although she's just not entirely like. I don't want to say she's unprepared. She just lack. I mean. I feel like it, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's an I, interesting situation because she gets sideswiped a lot because people are like, oh, you're the daughter, the daughter of Trump. We're going to start treating you this way. And then she's going to try and do something or say something like like the, the, the meeting with the, all of the women uh, talking about women's rights and everything. Even though she was trying to preach that, you know, about women's rights and everything, she was still booed. Yes, it was because she started talking about Donald Trump and everything. But like, I don't know. It, it's. I feel like people had that connotation that they were going to boo her before she started talking about her father. Sure. And, like, she is honestly probably better equipped most of the time than he is to speak at most events. I mean, and if it's a script off a teleprompter, then, I mean, she... That's not that difficult. Yeah. Um but I can do that. It is more of the symbol that it gives off when the president, I, and because like you said, if he can't do it, then, you know, maybe the ambassador should do it because wherever they're at, there is an ambassador there. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. or, you know, whoever came with him or the vice president, if he's there or somebody, the fact that because no one knows what Ivanka's job title is, and I'm not here to discuss or debate that. I don't care. It it just sends an odd message when he just goes, ah, let her do it. I, I mean, it's cool, but, like, well, uh, I don't know if it's actually that cool. I don't know. It's interesting. And, I mean, and the event was specifically for, um, what was it for? I had read it, and my brain has completely left. It was so. It's an event that is discussing combating extremism, specifically extremism on social media. Okay. And Donald Trump was supposed to go and attend and speak about it, and instead Ivanka went and spoke about the, the entire ordeal because there is a lot of extremism that is bred from social media because of how fast things can spread. And I mean. Sure. I mean, I guess it wasn't. I, I mean, I, I presume that Donald is still going to attend the peace talks that are supposed to be taking place tomorrow. Um, he's supposed to be holding peace discussions about Palestine. Palestine. Pa pa Palis Palestine. Sure. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And it's Palestine. Who knows? Maybe those are both correct. So I mean, maybe he, not Palestine. Maybe he'll still that was do my that one. You know, maybe he'll still go do that one. I, okay, so he he's already done Israel, right? Um, theoretically, after this, after today or after tomorrow, he's supposed to head out to uh, the Vatican to talk with the Pope. Well, and he's supposed to talk with Israel leaders tomorrow about negotiating those peace things over Palestine, Palestine, right? 
No, I'm sorry. He has to go to a G7 summit meeting or something like that, and then to to Rome. So, um, like, I don't I don't want to criticize him for being exhausted. Like, that's fine. I'm just questioning what you what his actions will be in the future if he continues to default to his daughter. And here's the other question. We'll get our first woman president. Well, and yeah, that's what I was getting at. Was Except like, not really, because there is a president. I forget which president, but his wife pretty much ran the entire thing. Uh, Bill Clinton? No. I'm talking about older president. <laughs> no, okay. He was essentially so bedridden that he couldn't do anything, so his wife did everything for him. Interesting. Um, there's a there's this really sick podcast. Actually, I'm going to plug it right now. I forgot the name of it um, entirely. But it's it's made by um, one of the guys who did the Flop House, and the Flop House is my, like my favorite podcast. It's where they they watch that a shitty movie and then review it. Right. Um, Elliot Kalin, who was a writer for John Stewart, he was also a comic book writer for a couple Spider Man comics called Spider Man and not Spider Man and Friends, uh, Spider Man and the X Men. It's really good. Um, he he does um, he does a he's co-hosting a, co a podcast called Presidents Are People Too, and they talk about uh, they pick a president and they talk about his life and his presidency and everything about him. Okay. Um, I would like to say her as well, but you know we haven't had one of those yet. Sure. So. Well, I guess we'll see. But in any case, I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Nathan, what did you care about in the last seventy-two hours? Uh, games in general. Yeah, video games or board games or a little bit of both. I um, I have been playing this uh, this game that's an alpha right now called Streets of Rogue, and that may game is so much fun. Um, it's in a humble bundle, so I recommend it because it's the Tiny Build humble bundle, and Tiny Build is one of my favorite companies. They do speedrunners and they host um, Awesome Games Done Quick, which is one of the best things for charity charity it's true they it ra is, they raised two million dollars this year right yeah just because people wanted to watch some animals die in a video game um actually i don't remember if if the animals died um if animals die got more votes than animals survive anyways aside from that i also built this pretty bitchin deck in eternal and i need to tweak it uh greatly so that it's it works better but and normally in a game, you'll get like a max of maybe like 15 to 20 um, uh, power. And my last game, I had a max of 35 power. I got to summon seven owls when I played Great Parliament. It was fun. I Now I need to know how many people just heard... And then another thing is the, that ki the thing that I kickstarted uh, two, two, um, two years ago... They got another update the 16th that I didn't know about, and that was, hey, everyone needs to update your information so because I'm going to be sending out the PDF sometime this week. Um, not are, the week of the 16th, but this week. One of my so kicks... No, go ahead. What? Uh, sometime soon I will get a PDF for it, and I'm super excited because I'm going to start writing that horror movie. One of my Kickstarters is about to be fulfilled. Nice. Um, That's what's up. It's, I love it. It's called Third Editions. Is, are you going to be playing third edition? No, 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 no. The 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 publishers are called third editions, oh. and what they do, and I have no idea how good or bad these are, but I went ahead and kickstarted anyway. They they have all of these books already written in French. I can't read French, and they're these massive. <inaudible> sure, they're these massive like two hundred page hardcover books the size of art books that are full of art and information on video games specific ones like for the the kickstarter was to get specific ones translated into english and you could get different books translated um in this case they were the your options were zelda dark souls and final fantasy 7 i Get started the one for Final Fantasy Seven. You don't say. Yeah, right. I know. And so I'm I'm curious to see what's in it because it's like 200 pages about Final Fantasy Seven, and I'm I'm just intrigued to see how much is actually in there because that's you get the a coding lot. for the entire game. Right. It's just a book full of code. Mm. Um, but would yeah. not be disappoint. 
So the last thing that we're going to talk about today that I cared about in the last 72 hours is on Saturday Night Live, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for the fifth time, was hosting Saturday Night Live. And at the very end of it, Tom Hanks came out and they joint jokingly announced that they were going to have a joint ticket uh, with for the 2020 presidential election. With whoa, the, whoa, whoa, whoa. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Tom Hanks? Yeah. Now, they did say it was a joke and they even took down the banner and all that stuff so that – but the thing is, though, is that – they said it was a joke, also oh, because it, that 2020 is still three years away. Here's the thing, though. The Rock has been, in a serious fashion, discussing running. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. now, Tom Hanks... I really wish Arnold could run. Yeah, Tom Hanks... It would make no. him vote Republican. Tom Hanks has not said anything about running. Now, here's the other thing, though, is that there's there's no actual official confirmation of this but there's someone else that has been heavily rumored is going to run for president in 2020 mark zuckerberg creator of facebook he's gonna he's gonna zucker you fifth richest man in the world worth roughly 50 billion dollars is rumored and has been making a lot of trips and travels and conversations with people and is rumored to be running for president in 2020. This could cool. this could mean that in 2020 the presidential ticket is Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus Mark Facebook Zuckerberg. Uh, it depends on what what party they're running at. If they run the same party initially, one of them's going to be booted early. Right. But oh my god. The the other thing on this though is is that like my votes for Rocky Maivia none of these are politicians anymore it's just famous people yeah well i mean ronald reagan was a, a famous person before he got on yeah but uh, he, presidency yeah but he didn't go straight from actor to presidency jesse ventura uh except he wasn't a president he was a he was just a politician jesse the bodybuilder ventura he was a fucking predator so here's the thing. Would you be upset if either of them ran? And would you be upset if either of them got elected? All right. First off, I don't give a fuck who runs for presidency. All right. I didn't give a shit that Donald Trump ran for presidency. I feel anybody and their fucking mothers should be allowed to run for presidency. Whether or not you get elected is an entirely different story. Sure. Okay. I was not a fan of Donald Trump getting elected. Sure. He could have ran all he fucking wanted. I don't give a shit. The fact that he won made me kind of salty. Sure. So, I don't give a shit that either of these people are running. Whether or not they get elected, based off of their views, is whether or not I'll give a shit if they get elected or not. So, with what you know about them right now, would you be upset if either of them got elected? And if you had to pick between them, who would you choose? I would definitely choose Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he's got the people's fucking strudel in his goddamn pants. The people's strudel in his pants? What he calls his dick. Is that so? He's the people's champion, motherfucker. Of course it's the people's strudel. The people's strudel. Dude, find it. It's a great promo. Listen to it sometime. It's when he was younger. Um, I don't. I think he was still The Rock, not Rocky Maivia. But he comes from a long... He, well, not a long line. I think his, his grandfather was the first one that started wrestling. So he comes from a line of wrestlers. All right. Yeah, and it was when he was pretty young. Yeah. Huh. Crazy. Okay. Didn't I feel like that. I feel like with The Rock, you have this, this level where you can go from face and make everybody love you to be that hard heel that you really need sometimes. And... Compared to Mark Zuckerberg, who would be the who would become the youngest president to ever get elected, and unlike Trump, is an actually successful businessman. He's gonna Zuckerberg you though. You gotta be careful. What does that mean? I don't know. He's gonna steal all your ideas out from under you. But see, here's the here's the thing, right? Is I, there are lots of businesses, people, creators that get criticized for Steve doing <clears throat> for for doing that. Of taking someone else's idea. And here's the problem, though, is that most of the time they take someone else's idea, make it work well or improve it ever so slightly, and then make it one of the most amazing things ever. Sure. 
I mean, it's like kind of shitty, but you know, it's like Blizzard. Blizzard hasn't had an original idea in their entire life. Hey, uh, there's Heroes of the. Mm, there's um, World of Work. Mm, there's Starcraft. Mm. I'm... There's Overwatch. Yeah. Diablo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lost Vikings. It's just a platformer. That's fine. There's a lot of things that are just platformers. My point is, it, it, like, Blizzard has not done anything that it was original. The closest being Overwatch. I feel like, yeah, the closest would be Overwatch. But otherwise, they just take other people's ideas and make them really good. Except for Heroes of the Storm. And kind of, the, except right, for Hearthstone. Right. No. I really, really, really fucking wish Heroes of the Storm was better. But as it is right now, it makes me want to stab myself in the face. Please don't. I don't want to clean it's that up. so fucking bad. Either way, the point is is that if Mark Zuckerberg just buys and steals and improves everyone's idea as president, I don't think that's a bad thing. That being said, I just really don't like MOBAs. That's fair. And anyway, though, we're over an hour. Let's get the hell out of here. So, everybody, um, dude, I'm, I, my brain just emptied again. I, I don't know. I don't even know. If uh, you like what you hear... Uh, support the show, patreon.com slash daily internet. Otherwise, follow us on social media. You can do that on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at iReditCast. You can also follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play if you want to take us on the go and listen to us on your phone. Otherwise, you can catch us live on Facebook currently Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Specific Daylight Time. Um, it sounds as though we will be testing out a 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time starting next week. Seven? I thought it was six. Six for us, seven for the West Coast. All oh, right, Pacific. Gotcha. Yep. Because we're Alaska Daylight Time. Otherwise, though, please be sure to send us what – if you want us to talk about something or if you just want to send us in some feedback, you can send us an email to our inbox, which is feedback.iread at gmail.com, um, or you can call and leave us a voicemail at 508-738-2278. That is it, everybody. That is your 291st dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And remember, everybody – don't, Don't get, get Have a good day. Goodbye.